joined by Satya Nadella. Who, so, uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, your your thoughts on this event in general. Um, you know, last year was about big data. This year, it's a little bit more focused, a little bit broader focus on the modern uh, enterprise, as they say. What's your take on kind of uh, it's, this event? It's, it's, it's a great event. Uh, this is my first time here as well, and um, you know, having a chance to. Uh, even see a couple of panels and just participate. I think this notion of a modern enterprise is for real. I think that mm -hmm. there is a reimagination uh, of what does infrastructure mean, what do applications mean inside of the enterprise, and mm -hmm. we're going through this tectonic shift, uh, which we participate in. Uh, and so to have a forum like this to discuss that was it's, it's just great. So let's dig into that a little bit. What you know, what makes uh, the what makes the modern enterprise? It's it's certainly uh, cloud and uh, virtualization. You've got the big data piece, um, kind of the DevOps model of application development. Um, how do you kind of define what the, the all bring the bringing together of all these different elements? What yeah. makes a, a modern enterprise? For, for yeah, Microsoft, one of the things that. I, li I like to sort of um, make sure we focus on, I work on the infrastructure business at Microsoft. So if you're in the infrastructure business, the key thing is to be in touch with the applications. Um, and in t it turns out in our own case today, we are building a pretty diverse set of applications, both consumer and enterprise. Uh, so we're building Bing, which is an applied machine learning application. Uh, we're building Office 365, which is an enterprise-focused collaboration communication application. We're building Dynamics and another enterprise uh, CRM, ERP in the cloud application, uh, and what have you. So that diversity of applications makes you rethink uh, what is the infrastructure needed from storage, compute, as well as the network. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're building a new operating system uh, for the modern enterprise to be able to deploy these modern applications. So that's kind of how I conceptualize it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say there are four major uh, elements to it. Uh, the first one is it's inside of the data center, you have much more of a software-driven data center where you're orchestrating your compute, storage, and network in support of your applications, either at the data center or multi-data center scale, because there's not a single enterprise that's not using some public cloud provider or another service provider in addition to what they already are virtualizing inside their own private cloud. Uh, so that is all a software control plane. And so we're really thinking about what is the modern operating system that enables you to manage the data center. A second dimension uh, would be the con what is driven through consumerization of IT. I like to describe it as transforming IT to be much more people-centric. Uh, so you want end users to adopt the devices they want mm -hmm. and still have access to all their applications and data. And yet, IT needs to be able to set compliance and policy, and so how do you really reimagine that mm -hmm. uh, is another dimension. Big data is something you reference. There's not going to be a single application that's not a big data application. Um, and so those are uh, the major, major themes. And the last thing I would say is this DevOps. Uh, so not only have you built the application, but it's even the life cycle around the application is being reimagined. Uh, how developers and operations professionals come together in support of an ongoing improvement and continuous integration. These four mega trends, I think, constitute a modern enterprise infrastructure. Interesting. So let's dig into a little bit about what you mentioned about the use of kind of public cloud infrastructure as well as your internal uh, data center. So you've got these hybrid environments that are starting to emerge. Um, again, pretty much software-led, uh, software-led infrastructure uh, is what we're calling it, a Wikibon. Um, how do you go about actually making it possible for, for CIOs and their teams and to actually manage those environments in a in a as efficient a way as possible, um, you know, making decisions about which applications are deployed in the public cloud, which are deployed in your data center, how they interact, potentially applications that are drawing on data from both spots. It's obviously can get very complex. So, um, you know, Microsoft is one of those public cloud providers with Windows Azure. Um, so, how do you yeah. approach that problem? So, if you sort of take what you just described, which is if you you sort of start with the design point mm -hmm. that there will be a public cloud, there will be a private cloud and a service provider cloud, then how you think about the software control is going to be defined by that design point. So it's not going to be narrowly defined as bring everything into my data center and I'll help you manage it. But it is actually distributed. So it, I think of this as the true fruition of distributed computing and we believe in that. So then what are the things that matter? First is identity. So anything, whenever things get distributed, the most important thing to, that brings back things together uh, is actually identity uh, of users and identity for resources. Uh, so Active Directory was a great resource for many enterprises in terms of how they tamed the complexity of the previous generation of client server. 
Now we have replumbed and reimagined uh, Active Directory with uh, Azure Active Directory. So this consistency in directories helps IT administrators manage this complexity. Uh, the next one is virtualization. Uh, so not only would you be able to virtualize on your private cloud, you should be able to move the same work cloud, workload which is virtualized to any of these other clouds. So you need a degree of guarantee that the performance characteristics of a virtualized workload get maintained across all of this. So that's another thing that with our Hyper-V investments and our Azure investments, we are you know, making sure that happens. Uh, the other one would be management. Uh, so with, if you can be sitting on the system center management console and the orchestrator and looking at a workload, which could be in fact in one, one of these clouds, or in fact the tiers of a single application could be split, which is the front end is on Azure, the back end is back in uh, on-premise. Uh, and so that's also very, very important to have a management tier, which is the control plane that allows you to manage this complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, it's the consistency of the application platform itself. So if you're building a development, you never want to be in the state where you build a great app, but you can never check out. Uh, so you, if you build it in the public cloud in the case of Azure, you should be able to take it and run it on a private cloud or on a service provider cloud. So these four things are on identity, management, virtualization, and application platform. Uh, I think is the core investment you've got to make to help enterprises truly adopt the cloud while you know it's complex, but you got to tame the complexity. Uh, and then of course, you know, what you're talking about uh, really is a lot of data being generated. Uh, Companies, of course, want to want to start taking advantage of that data. They want to analyze it. They want to actually uh, take those insights and turn them into uh, either applications or um, perhaps uh, convey them to, to executives and others in terms of visualization. And of course, one of those underlying platforms is Hadoop. Um, talk about Microsoft's uh, approach to Hadoop. I know you're working with Hortonworks. You actually kind of uh, discontinued working on your own big data uh, technology when you realized, I think, that you know Hadoop was going to is going to become the de facto standard. Uh, so talk about how you're making it possible to bring Hadoop into this environment, uh, where more and more companies are looking to bring that in, maybe as a big data hub, kind of store a lot of data, and then feed it out to different applications, different workloads. What is your approach to actually making that, um, I guess, enterprise ready? Yeah. And making it easy to get, get started, and then turn you know, maybe science projects into really production level right. deployments. That's right. I mean, this notion of uh, being able to take data and convert it into insights uh, in support of enterprise goals is sort of the holy grail of this moment. Um, and so one of the things that we are actively doing uh, is to bring a lot of the traditional value we've always had. If you think about the momentum we have with our self-service BI capabilities on the edge of data, which is Excel, SharePoint, SQL analysis services, is where all data goes to in order to be able to drive insights within end, you know, with, with, with end users. Because at the end of the day, humans will be involved uh, to be able to drive insight out of all of this data. So now the question is, how do we take that edge loop and connect it with the information production, which is upstream? And that is where we're completing the story with having HD Insight, having even a relational interface on top of HD Insight uh, for in-memory ad hoc query analysis, like a data warehouse on top of it, which I think uh, the Hadoop community itself is adopting, which is a SQL interface on Hadoop is probably one of the more talked about things nowadays. Uh, and so this notion of having a complete data platform, everything from MapReduced to stream processing to uh, SQL-like query interactively, uh, and then empowering end users and workflows with data around end users with SharePoint, Excel, uh, where we've invested in things like uh, Power Pivot and Power View, which are actually powerful in-memory databases. In fact, I would say the most powerful in-memory database now is Power View inside of Excel, from where you can issue a SQL, I mean basically a Hive query to HD inside, and populate millions of rows in a tabular column form that you're very familiar with. Uh, we think that that democratization of big data is going to be very, very important to acceptance of it, uh, as you said it, from science projects or just being in the data science department to right. being ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. um, so we've only got time for one more question. So we'd just love to get your kind of future outlook. Uh, what, what are some of the key priorities for you and your group over the next, say, six to 12 months? I mean, the, the key thing for us is uh, really bootstrapping our cloud business. Uh, we've got some fantastic traction with Office 365. It's really uh, doing very well uh, in the Q3 earnings. We talked about how 
how uh, we have a, you know, on a run rate basis a billion dollars of revenue going to Office 365. And many customers who are coming to Office 365 never bought an exchange server from us. So we're even, you know, it's not even zero sum uh, really in the, in the short run at least. Um, and so we are very glad with that. And there is, Azure is just a natural complement to any customer who's already got Office 365. SharePoint extensions, the end user BI, Active Directory administration, all of these are sort of very natural extensions. But Azure itself now has got very, very significant momentum. Yesterday we, uh, we talked about how Azure and Azure services with all of our service provider partners has also got a billion dollars of revenue now for us. So that means when it comes to the core of the enterprise and their move to the cloud, which is going to be complementing a lot of what they're already doing in on-premise, uh, is something that we're a pretty major player on. Uh, and if anything, we want to be solving the here and now practical problems with a forward-looking vision uh, around identity, around consistency of the management plane, around virtualization compatibility, around the application platforms. And I think that that's what uh, we're really up to uh, in the immediate future. All right. Yeah, I think you really hit on something there. With these, these, these are going to be hybrid uh, deployments. They're going to, you know, just much like in big data. You know, Hadoop isn't going to come in and replace your database, your relational database, and neither is the cloud going to replace your internal data center. They've got to work together. It sounds right. like you guys are working hard to kind of make that uh, as seamless uh, a proposal as possible for for your clients. So, uh, Satya Nadella from Microsoft. We appreciate you coming on the cube. Thanks very much. We we'll hope you come back and join us another Great. time. Thank you so much. We'll be right back from the Excel Stanford Symposium uh, with our next guest uh, right after this. Thank you.